We just got to keep on dreaming. We don't need to put aside that feeling, no. We just can't deny life has been kind of crazy. But now it's time to get up, get up, get up now. Tell me, oh yeah, everything you're thinking, I'll listen. Whatever you're afraid of.
Hey, good evening, everybody. God bless you. So happy to see you tonight. Welcome to another installment of Passages in the Parlor with Pastor CJ. Uh, you have tuned in to the St. John Northwest, the Construction Zone, Wednesday evening broadcast. And this would be a great time, if you would, to go ahead and tag somebody, put their name in the chat if they're one of your friends. It should pull it up. Or go ahead and text somebody and let them know that we are on the air live. I pray that you have had a good week so far. I pray all of you made it through the storm, okay, and did not suffer any damage, did not get caught in any floodwaters. And so uh, my prayer is that all is going well with you. Amen. Amen. Once again, go ahead and text somebody, call somebody, let them know that we are on the air. Uh, get your Bibles, your notepads, uh, your pens, your devices, and let's get ready for another This is an Emergency installment uh, in our series that we are uh, doing on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Amen. Amen. So excited uh, about tonight. Believe God is going to speak to us yet again as God has been doing uh, uh, all of this year, amen, since the very beginning. Would you now join me in a moment of prayer as we go to the Lord and ask the Lord's blessings upon our time together, amen? Gracious God, how we love you and thank you and honor you for this time of sharing, uh, this time of study uh, with your people, oh God. We thank you for the medium of uh, Facebook and the medium of YouTube, oh God, we thank you uh, that uh, all over the world, God, we can share the gospel just by the click of a button. And so God, we thank you for bringing all things into being for us to do just that. Let somebody be helped tonight, be encouraged tonight. Uh, leave with a renewed determination, oh God, to seek you all the more, to seek you first. Oh God, before we seek anything and anyone else, uh, be with your teacher tonight. Oh God, fill me with your precious Holy Ghost and let me teach under the anointing, oh God, of your Holy Spirit. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and the people of God said, amen, amen. Uh, family tonight, family and friends tonight, I want us to pick right up where we have been um, uh, traveling. Uh, we see uh, my good friend, hey, uh, Reverend uh, Cassandra McGee and Kwanazi, God bless you. Good to see you tonight. Uh, Tracy Dalco, hey, Sister Joe DeBose, God bless you. Great to see you. Hey, Sister Linda Price and 
Cynthia Montgomery and Karen Armstead, I see is watching. God bless you. Hey, Sister Joanne Woods, God bless you. Uh, Valerie Jolly, and Janice Fountain and Mary Tozano, God bless you. Hey, Dakeisha Baldwin, uh, great to see you. Hey, Sister Kathy Johnson, Brother Doug, uh, God bless you. Hey, Sister Anita Blake and Tony Triplett, God bless you. All of our uh, folks from uh, Southeast Texas and waiting for our folks from Detroit to come on and New York, God bless you. Great to see all of you tonight. We have been uh, in a riveting series, and I call it riveting because it has shaken me uh, so much whereby uh, I just want to be in the book of Revelation uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, as Jesus gave John the Revelator uh, this uh, amazing message challenge to the church of Sardis, I believe that this message uh, this challenge is also for St. John Northwest, the construction zone, not just for us as a church collectively, but as those of us who are individual members. I believe God is speaking to each of us and all of us. I want us to begin thinking about how would our lives change? What would we do differently uh, if we were declared or it was declared that we only had six months to live. How would we change our relationship with God? And here is the truth. We really don't know how much longer we have to live. We just act as if we have all of the time in the world. And Jesus is saying to the church at Sardis, listen, uh, I know your deeds. Let's just go there for a moment. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. I know you've heard me go over this every week, but I want you to get it in your spirit. What Jesus is saying through John the Revelator to the church at Sardis, he says, I know your deeds. I know what you're capable of. I know what you've done. And you have built this great reputation of being alive. Everything externally uh, seems as if it's firing on all pistons. Everything is going well. You've got it going on. He says, but in actuality, from my vantage point, from how I see it, this is Jesus talking, you are dead. What does that really mean to be declared dead uh, by Jesus the Christ? Uh, what does that make us think of? It's like, wait a minute, uh, I'm vibrant, have great makeup, have great clothing, have a great house, have a great job. But clearly Jesus is not talking about uh, the externality uh, of our existence. He's not talking about the externals. He is talking about the internal, hear this, and the eternal. The internal and the eternal. Let's see what else he says. He says, wake up, strengthen that which remains. In other words, there needs to be a stirring, needs to be a stirring in us, a waking up to come out of our slumber and to strengthen that which remains and, hear this, is about to die. Jesus says, you may not realize this, uh, but I am looking on the inside. I'm not impressed by what's on the outside. I'm looking at the inside and I can tell you that you are in danger of dying. Yeah, you may have it going on according to all of your friends and all of your colleagues and all of your connections, but here is the truth. What you have left is about to die. It's hanging by a thread. It's on life support. And he says, and unless you get involved, personally involved in that which I have designed for your life, it's not going to end well. He says, I found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. He says, yeah, you have declared it good enough. You have said you are through with this. You have said, okay, this is the termination point for me. He says, but you're not through. Hey, Sister Margie Cephas. Hey, Jay Jackson. You are not finished. Hey, Celeste Harris. You are not through 
doing that which I have required of you. And in other words, you don't get to say you're finished. You don't get to say you're done. You're done when I say you're done. You're finished when I say you're finished. It is complete when I say it is complete. And here is the warning. He says, remember, therefore, he's given us some clues of how we do this right. He says, what you have received, all of this word on Sundays, all of this word on Wednesdays, uh, all of that which I have given to you in your private prayer time, what you've received and heard, he said, you need to hold on to it. Hold it fast. Hold it tight. Don't forget it. Write it on the tablets of your heart. He says, and then repent. Then repent. He says, because if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I will come. Listen, family, I'm not sure what you're picking up from that, but I am hearing warning signs. I am hearing uh, that this is a 911 emergency, uh, that this is not some gimmick. This is just not some nice beginning of the year scripture. This has come to us uh, by way of Holy Spirit saying uh, to us as a church, great, all the things you've done before, all of the people you've helped before, check. I applaud you. But there are things that are unfinished. First of all, he's really talking about our internal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, listen, he says, everybody's been kind of lax. Everybody's just been kind of chilling out. He says, but I need you to drill down into who you are in me because there are people who are needing you to show up with the gift I have given you. Please hear this. Please hear this. God says, I have deposited something in you and what I have deposited in you is not for you, but it is for what? The world that is waiting for a light in darkness. Waiting, what? For salt in a very dull, unseasoned world. Remember, we've been talking about you are the salt of the earth and many of you said you've lost your passion You've lost your saltiness. And Jesus is saying to us, you don't have uh, this uh, luxury of time to decide whether or not you want to serve me, to decide whether or not you want to praise me, to decide whether or not you want to use the gift I have given you. He says, I'm giving you fair warning. And don't think that this is stuck in antiquity somewhere. Don't think this is just for the church of Sardis. Don't think for a moment that this is just the record of the word of God for an ancient church. It is for our contemporary times. It's for you and it is for me. And we're saying tonight, what would you do if you knew that you only had six months to live? What would you do? What would you do? Hey, Deborah Warner Williams. Hey, Rita Adams. God bless you. Listen, I want us to really understand that which God is saying to us in this moment. We look at all of the opportunities that we have been given. We look at the giftedness. We look at the anointing we have been given. And we're saying, yeah, but when I get through doing this and when I get through doing that, then I'm going to give God all of my attention. And I believe this passage is saying to us, this revelation passage is saying to us, how do you think you're getting to do all of that? and all of this. It is I who gives you the strength every day to go out and, and create wealth, to go out what and write books, to go out and influence people and situations. And you're saying that when you get through doing all of that, I've given you the energy to do, the wisdom to do, the discernment to do, then you're going to turn around and give me back what I gave to you. Is anybody listening? to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us tonight. 
that we don't have time. And so last week, we dealt with Adam and Eve who had been given dominion. All of this will tie in. Who were given dominion. And then they decided what? To abdicate their dominion to that which was beneath them. Can we just go back for just a moment, for just a moment, to see what it is God gave to us, humankind, at the very beginning? Look at this. Um, Don't want to go there first. Hold on, hold on, just a second. Hold on, just a second. Let's see here. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Then God said, I give you, let us make mankind in our own image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Remember that from last week? Remembering that from last week? See this. Mankind, humankind, made in the image and likeness of God, so that may, they may rule over everything. Watch this. So God created humankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Looking at equality, he blessed them, said to them, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it, Rule, there's that word again, fish in the sea, birds in the sky over every living creature that moves on the ground. Are, are you remembering that from last week? Then God says, listen, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. God is setting it up for them. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, Everything that has breath in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. Are you there? God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Are you still there with me? Now, here comes our test. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Look at this. The serpent was created by God. I want you to see that. Don't try to make that serpent anything else. This serpent was a wild animal. The Lord God made this animal and this animal was crafty and clearly the animal had the ability to speak, to talk, had the capability of speech. And he says to the woman, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Now, this is where I want to get back to. How many of us are so secure in our knowledge of God and our knowledge of what God has spoken to us, that we will not be deterred by anything or anyone who says anything to the contrary. That, that's what I'm asking. That's the question on the table. How many of us are secure in who we are in God and what God has declared to us and over us that when someone comes to challenge us, our circumstances challenge us, we're able to not only rebut it, but ignore it. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on your answer. Waiting on your answer in the chat. How many are secure enough in who you believe God called you to be and what you believe God called you to do? that even though something or someone may challenge it, you know for a fact what God has said and you are standing on that and will not let anyone step to you 
and say anything to the contrary. And this is where Eve makes her mistake. She actually engages foolishness. Why would you hear this? Why would you entertain an inferior voice when you have heard a superior voice already announcing to you what God has planned for you? I'll wait. Why would you entertain foolishness? Why would you entertain an inferior voice? And why would you entertain that which you have dominion over and allow it to challenge what? Your authority and your anointing. Come on. Too many of us are talked out of what God has called us to do by inferior voices, by persons who are not discerning by persons who the Lord has not spoken to. But because we may revere them, because they may have some worldly authority, then we trade in, hear this, what God has spoken to us and look for the validation, what, of a worldly authority. C come on. Come on, I'm 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 really trying to drill down because this this is a part of waking up. This is a part of our waking up. This is a part of us coming out of our slumber because too many of us have been put to sleep by the validation of the world. And can I tell you, the validation of the world is fickle, it's sometimey, it's unreliable, and can always be taken back, can always be reneged upon. And so who am I talking to tonight that you are still what hearing in your ear what some worldly authority said versus tapping into what our spiritual authority has said. God had already made them in his image and his likeness. He had already given them rulership had already given them dominion over every creeping thing that crawls on the earth. And here is a creeping thing. Here is a thing that is beneath her and she engages it in conversation. And this is what he says. Did God really say? And if any of us, come on now, if any of us have a discerning ear whatsoever, if any of us, are connected with the Holy Spirit who dwells on the inside of us. Hear me now. We should never entertain what? That which is beneath us. I am not being elitist when I say this. I am not saying there are people that are beneath us. There are people that we should not be what? In spiritual connection with. I'm just going to put it out there. There are people that we should not be in spiritual connection with because we are light and they are darkness. And we are admonished to separate ourselves, to come out from among them because what happens so many times, instead of us having influence over them, they have the larger influence over us. He says, did God really say, how many of us are so secure in the word that we know? That when someone questions that God really say, we know exactly what God said and we cannot be turned away from it. Watch this. That, that God really say, I just want to show it to you. That, that, that God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden. Watch this. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. Watch this. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. So now here is what I want to know from our congregation and our friends tonight. She was able to regurgitate. She was able to uh, uh, tell the serpent what God said. So if you're sure about what God said, why would you then act contrary to what God said? Come on, come on, talk, talk, talk to me tonight. 
she is saying, she repeated, that there is one tree that we cannot eat from, period, the end. And we don't have to know the reason why. God said, hear this, there is a tree that I do not want you to access. Now, here's the thing. This is what serpents do. Serpents will turn our attention away from all of the trees that we have access to and have us focus in on, watch this, that which we don't have access to. Sister Kathy, you said she knew better. Well, so do we. How many of us know better? And we still do what we think we're big enough and bad enough to do and then want to cry because of the consequences that come from us having been disobedient. Not only did she know better, we know better. And I'm saying to us tonight, with the teaching that we receive, that's straight from the word of God, why are we still, what? taking chances with serpents. That, that's all I want to know. Why are we still taking chances with serpents? Why are we still entertaining conversations with serpents? Jesus says, you better wake up because that little bit that you still have, it's about to die. And I don't want you to lose it. This is what Jesus is saying. I don't want you to lose it, which is why I'm giving you this warning. He says, already. What you have is on life support. What you have already is all already breathing in a shallow fashion. You're barely here. You're barely attentive. You're barely praising. You're barely praying. You're barely reading the word of God. Come on here. And he says, and if you're not careful, that zeal, that passion that you used to have will end up dead. Yes, your body will still be alive, but your spirit will die. And he says, I need you to wake up. Infuse, come on now, this knowledge of the word of God that will revive that which is within you and save that which God has deposited on the inside of you. Somebody says, my, my flame is almost out. Well, here is the thing. When we see, Let's just take some practical application here, Sister Joe. When we see in a fireplace, hear this, uh, that the, the fire has, has gotten low and all that is in uh, the fireplace now are what we call embers, E-M-B-E-R-S, are some embers, right? Don't you know that embers are enough to start another fire, but you've got to go and get something to put on top of those embers. Many of us just may have embers. After three years, you guys, next month, it'll be three years that we've been in this pandemic. Come on, come on. There you go. There you go, Reverend Cassandra. We've, we've got to fan it, but we've got to do something. Come on. We've got to get involved because here's the truth. If we just leave those embers only, in the fireplace and never put any additional logs on it, trust me, the fire will go out. Or maybe you think somebody else is responsible for the wood, but it's you who needs the warmth. It's you who needs the fire. It's you who needs to be stirred up. So why wouldn't we take it upon ourselves, come on here, to go get our own wood, to read the word of God for ourselves? Y'all not with me? Because it takes personal responsibility. To be able to say, listen, I'm the one that let my fire go out. I'm the one that let my passion dwindle. I'm the one that's been sitting on my giftedness. And so then why should it be, come on, up to somebody else? I, I, I'm, come on here. I'm, 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 I'm doing my best uh, to bring my log to the fire. I'm bringing you the word of God that I'm hoping will reinvigorate you, that will reignite, come on, this passion, this fire. And I'm saying it's because I believe we've been engaged in foolish conversations. Uh, we've been engaged with things that are beneath us, with undiscerning people, uh, with dispassionate people, 
uh, with people who have no intention of doing any better than what they're doing right now. And because they're not planning on doing any better, they don't want you to do any better. And so I'm saying one of the things we may need to do is to get that which puts our fires out, which puts our passions out. We need to put it out. Or are you, are you, are you here? Are you here? Watch this. Watch this. Conversations with, with foolish, foolish individuals. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden. So she knew what God said. Can, can somebody just say, I know, I know what the Lord said. I know. I know what the Lord said. Just admit it. I know enough about my Bible. Stop trying to be all deep. Well, you know what? Some things in the Bible, I just don't understand. Can I tell you there are enough things in the Bible that you do understand that if you follow those things, I wish I had some help. If you follow those things, you'd be on a good track. Please hear me. This is what he says. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. Look at this. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Mm. Mm. Let that let that sink in. Here it is someone reinterpreting for her what God said, which is why we have to know the word of God for ourselves. Are, are, you, are you listening? Are you listening? Come on. Thank you, Sister Tony. I need to follow what I do know. Hear this. You will not surely die. Let's take a look at what many of us have not given Eve credit for. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. Now, once again, this, this was not, this was not, at the suggestion um, of the serpent, Eve investigated, the woman investigated the fruit. Talked about that last week, that word saw. I mean, she, she investigated, she examined and, and saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some. Can we can we stop there for just a moment? This this is a part of waking up. First of all, we said last week Eve was not hungry. Eve was not deprived. God had not held out on them. Once again, they had an entire creation at their disposal. And where we have fallen asleep is that somehow we think we have to have it all. Mind you, they had more than they ever could have gone through in a lifetime. But this one thing, somebody say this one thing, this one thing that moved her attention from all that she had, she began to focus on the one thing God said she could not have. How many of us, have lost that, come on, that which was really good for us, that which was really foundational for us, chasing something, come on now, that wasn't even guaranteed. C come on, come on, come on. What, can you think of one thing that you decided you were going to do anyway? It's no guarantee that it was going to work out. It was no guarantee uh, that, that God was going to bless it. But you decided. Hear this. You decided. I decided. 
that this is what I wanted to do. It says she saw that it was good for food, but there were other trees with fruit on it. Y'all not with me here. There were other trees that were pleasing to the eye. There were other trees that had nourishment. And so those trees were guaranteed. Those trees had been sanctioned for her. Hear me? And the one tree that God said, don't touch, just because I said so, should have been enough. But when we decide to go out of the obedience of God, when we decide to go outside the will of God, we might as well get ready for the consequences, whatever consequences come for being disobedient. Come on. Now, let, let's, let's stop hedging our bets. Well, then maybe, maybe it won't hurt so bad. Maybe, maybe I won't lose too much. There was nothing to lose. Eve, Adam had everything they could have possibly wanted. And they let an inferior voice, y'all keep hearing this. They let an inferior voice talk them out of the will of God. Check out who you hang out with. Check out who you listen to, what you listen to. Try the spirit by the spirit. Try the word of God by what other voices are saying. And if it does not line up with the word of God, then guess what? You need to what? Divest yourself of those relationships and divest yourself of those environments. Is anybody hearing the spirit of the Lord speak tonight? So she takes it. Not that she had to. She wanted to. She wasn't in need, hear this? She wasn't in need of anything else because God had provided all that she needed. Can somebody just say? Every need that I have, God has supplied it. That, that's the faithfulness of God. Every need that I, I may not have everything that I want, but remember God plainly said, Everything that I have created is for your use, except this one tree. And now there is going to be a forfeiture of all that we have for this one thing that God has said belongs to him. Jesus says, you better wake up. The world has put us to sleep with its commercials and all of that saying, oh, you, you can do this and you can do that. Obey your thirst. I mean, commercials that subliminally, you know, suggest to us that whatever we're thirsty for, whatever we're hungry for, obey your hunger. All of these subliminal messages that get into our spirit, what that helps us, what move further away from the will of God. And I'm saying, watch who you hang around, who you listen to, what you listen to, because they are influential. And you may think, oh no, I've got this spirit thing on lock. I've got my uh, Christianity on lock. Can I tell you, it only takes a moment because here they were walking in lockstep with God walking in fellowship with God, without any television commercials, y'all not with me here, without any other fashions or, or, or alcohol or drugs to influence them, it was an inferior voice that threw her off track who just merely suggested that God really say? That, that, that's where we are. That's, that's, that's where we are tonight. When we take a look at what God is saying to us, better, better wake up. Better, you, you better wake up. Let, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's go here. So, watch this. 
She took some and ate it. Watch what else she does. She also gave some to her husband, watch this, who was with her and he ate it. See, see, you know, usually when we hear this preached from, from, from various uh, pulpits or what have you, it was as if Eve was alone. She was not alone. It says, do you see, do you see scripture? Check your Bible. See if it says the same thing. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. So here, can I just say to us, have some people, come on now, riding with you that when they see that you're about to disobey God, when you're about to forfeit your favor, when you're about to mess up your good thing with God, could you have some people rolling with you to say, now listen, you know for a fact that God told us, told you that you were not supposed to eat from this tree. We have all, I need some people to help redirect me back to God. I need to have some people who will redirect me back to the word of God, what God said, to have somebody hold up for me. Come on now, my purpose, my gifting. It's, it, come, on, come on now. It says, and she gave some to her husband who was with her. How many of you, just by the Bible that you heard, not the Bible that you read, thought Eve was out somewhere by herself, and the serpent came along and convinced her, cajoled her, compelled her to eat from this tree. How many? How many? Just, just show of hands. How many of you thought Eve was somewhere by herself, willy-nilly, silly woman, right? Wandering off by herself and got caught in a corner with the serpent. How many of you thought that? That is not what the Bible says. Let's, let's just dispel that foolishness right now. That is not what the Bible says. And many of us, as I say it all the time, we live out of a Bible we have heard and not a Bible we have read. That's why you have to know what the word of God says for yourself. Rabbi Quantity says it happens to the strongest of people. You have believe it. We cannot sample sin. Holy Spirit must be in charge. Come on. I'm sure, Sister Joe, you've heard that taught. Of course, but that's not what the Bible said. Brother Jay says he thought Adam strolled up afterwards and said, oh my goodness, what have you done? No, Adam was right there with her. And I'm going to tell you right now, we need to get folk, hang out with people who are willing to risk the friendship, who are willing to risk the camaraderie, who are willing to fall out, come on, by telling us the truth. Come on, I want you to do an inventory right now. I want you to do an inventory right now. Thank you, Sister Kathy. Thank you for all of those of you who are being honest that that's what you were taught, that that's what you heard preached. I understand, but that's the reason why I insist, come on now, on us being a word church whereby we read the word for ourselves. I'm going to always show you the scripture. And then I'm going to always encourage you to go read it. Check me. You can go back and check that which I teach and preach. It's right there. This is not a new, this is not a new revision. They didn't just put this in yesterday. This is how each Bible has been canonized. Come on now. And it's been there all the time. Eve was not alone. And so what this teaches us is that regardless of our closest relationships, we need to check our closest relationships because sometimes people don't want to run the risk, what, of insulting us. Or they think, hey, you know, I won't be able to hang with them anymore if I challenge them with the truth. Challenge me. Come on, challenge me. Yeah, I'm your pastor. But if you guys hear something off and you say, well, pastor, I just wanted to call and you said something on Sunday or you said something on Wednesday. And I was just wondering, could you go over that again? I need us to be bold enough. Come on now, because we have put too many folk on a pedestal who've been teaching foolishness. Come on now who've been teaching foolishness and we've been ingesting that foolishness and living by that foolishness. I want you to be able to read the word of God for yourself. And so it teaches us 
that you can have folk who get the same instructions and will not say, the Keisha don't do that. Cassandra don't do that. AJ don't do that. Come on now. Robert don't do that. And y'all can get mad at me all day, but y'all know, y'all know I'm real good. I'll see something on Facebook and you talking crazy and all this. I'll call you and say, you need to stand down. You need to take that off. And I'll run the risk of you not wanting to be a member anymore. But I cannot on my watch, come on now, allow you to be what? Seduced is the word I want to use. Seduced by suggestion. Did God really say? Did God really say? So Sheila Taylor says, I was a Sunday school teacher, and when I asked my pastor for clarification, he removed me from teaching. Said she, she said she was deeply hurt. That's what happens. That when humans build up their own kingdoms, and we're not concerned about the kingdom of God. That's what happens, Sister Sheila, regrettably. But I just want us to see. That's really why Jesus says, wake up. Who are you really serving? What relationships are really important to you? Is your covenant relationship with God more important than your covenant relationship uh, with your best friend or with your ace boon coon? Right? And here it was. Adam and Eve received the same instructions. Eve takes it after careful examination, gives some to her husband, and he eats it as well. So here we go. 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 Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. Can, can we just kind of let that simmer for a moment? Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together hear this, and made coverings for themselves. Kind of kind of circle that. Kind of circle that. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. You see this? And they realized that they were naked. Mm-hmm. Isn't it amazing that God can create us fearfully and wonderfully, perfectly in his sight, in his likeness and in his image? Can you imagine being naked this whole time, being naked and unashamed this whole time? And then when we are disobedient, hear this, we see ourselves when we sin we see ourselves in a different light. They had always been naked. I just want you to get this. They had always been naked. And their nakedness was nothing shameful. Their nakedness was not anything to be ashamed of. Was, was not anything dirty, was not anything tawdry. But when we sin, sin distorts that which is perfect in God. Sin distorts our vision. Sin creates die vision. Separates us. They had been in holy communion with God. I want you to hear this, which is why Jesus is saying, wake up. And now all of a sudden, that which they were perfectly fine with, that which they had been in communion with, now all of a sudden they're ashamed of it. 
because sin perverts our view of us and our view of God. They had always been covered by their creator. I, I, want, you to, I want you to see the text tonight. They had always been covered by their creator. But now that they know sin, they now try to provide covering for themselves. Can I tell you, you cannot cover yourself. Can I, can I tell you that there is nothing that will hide you, hide our sin, my sin from God? There is no covering but God. Everything else is inferior. Do, do, do you see this? Do, do, do you see this? Look at this. I want you to see this. We have just a few more moments. Their eyes were opened. Open what? To the sinfulness of man. Once again, they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All they had known up until that time was good. And now they have the vantage point of good and evil. What is this in eight? Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden. I just love all of that anthropomorphic language. We talked about anthropomorphic, uh, meaning given human characteristics or uh, are human uh, phrases for what God does. Uh, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God. How ridiculous. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, do you see how the fellowship has been broken? They were once in total communion with God. God was talking to them. They were talking to God. God gave them wonderful instruction for rulership and how to handle their dominion. They blow it. And now, instead of being in fellowship, in communion with God, we now are hiding from God. I talked about it Sunday. Uh, when we are operating out of the will of God, when we are not in communion, when we are not in covenant relationship with God, with the church, uh, that's when we stay away. Uh, from that fellowship. That's when we stay away uh, from worship. That's when we stay away from the people of God and rather finding comfort amongst the people of God. Satan convinces us, oh no, you don't need to go. You don't want anybody to know your business. You don't want anybody to know you're going through. You don't want anybody to know that you're having trouble. When in essence, that is the very thing that you need because you will find strength and help among the people of God. Pastor, what are you saying to us? Jesus is saying the danger of isolation, the danger of this whole sequestering that's happened with us in this pandemic, the danger of us becoming pretty much virtual in every aspect of our lives. We, we, we go to the doctor virtually. Don't even have to go into the office anymore. But I'm going to tell you right now, you really can't examine what's going on with me uh, through a screen. We, we, we get our spiritual nourishment virtually. We, we, don't, we don't get a hug. We don't get a handshake, right? We don't have that uh, uh, fellowship with one another. Uh, we don't even have the camaraderie of the collegiality anymore in the workplace because everybody's working from home. And so we've become strangers to one another. There's a danger in that. There's a danger in that. And so they've gone from being face to face with God to hiding from God. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch this. They heard the sound of the Lord. 
But the Lord called to the man and says, where are you? Where are you? I think that's where we'll stop tonight. And we'll stop with that question. Where are you? Do we really believe that the creator uh, could not see or did not know uh, where they were? He had created them. He had created everything around them. He had created the fig leaves that they were trying to cover themselves with. Uh, but I believe it is not a physical question. Uh, I believe it's so many times uh, as Jesus would do with his disciples, he would ask questions uh, uh, or ask questions to uh, have, he would ask questions uh, that he already knew the answer to. But in self-reflection, can I ask tonight, where, where are you? Where are you in your relationship with God? Where are you in your desire to wake up and, and get back in fellowship with God? Where are you with your dreams? Have, have you just given up on them? Have you just said, hey, it'll never happen. I'm, I'm, I'm too old now or my time has passed. Uh, where are you? Can, can you ask yourself that question? Where, where am I? And am I just going through life? Once again, we've been talking about on autopilot, not really being engaged, not really being involved in my own life. I'm just kind of letting life happen to me rather than being engaged completely with God and with my purpose. Where, where are you? Can, can you spend some time tonight? Write that question down. And you just may want to start. Okay, where am I? You may want to do a physical location. This is where I am. And then you may say, where am I financially? Where am I emotionally? Where am I educationally? Because we're going to be dealing with all of these things. Where am I spiritually? Praise God, Rev. Where are you? What would make you, I, I believe this is what God is at, what would make you cash in all that you had in order to get nothing? What, what would make you throw all of that away? What would make you throw our relationship away? Reading an article the other day about about uh, spouses, spouses who cheat. It's not that they were unhappy. Uh, it's not as if they weren't fulfilled. It was just a forbidden tree. It was just something else, something else to do. And so I ask tonight, if you're on the edge, on the verge of trading in all that which God has put on the inside of you for a drink, for a snort, for a person, for put it put it in the just put it in the blank. Why would you give up all of that for something that's not even guaranteed? On a dare, I want to be real sober with this. Even even with our own bodies. As, as we take chances and we eat stuff that's not good for us and all of that. Why would we throw all of that away in order for momentary pleasure that we make or I put into motion uh, a permanent consequence for temporary pleasure? How many of us? How many of us? So, so tonight, as we, as we end our time together, Jesus says, wake up. Gather together that which remains 
and is about to die. He says, I'm giving you an opportunity by warning you. Jesus was always so graceful. It's a grace gift to give us a warning first. Give us an opportunity. What? To turn it around. Right? Before what? Bringing down judgment. I believe this is, this is where we are in this first month of the year. That, that I don't, I don't have any, you know, any cutesy phrase, you know, if it's to be, it's happening in 2023. I, I don't have any of that. I have, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. Wake up and strengthen that which remains and is about to die because you have left some stuff unfinished. I, I hear that so clearly. I hear that so clearly in my own life. There are things that are just unfinished, that are undone. And Jesus says, I'm giving you this. I've given you this for, for your congregation and for friends of the congregation and, and for your out-of-state members, you know, out-of-state friends, people who would log in. Uh, I'm giving you this and I'm going to have to be the first fruit of this. He says, so if nobody else does this, CJ, I need you to grab a hold of this and follow this all the way through. Are you with me tonight? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see some of your... Pastor, you asked this question last year. I can only say I have a better understanding about being in relationship with God. I am present and I truly hope to serve him for the rest of my life, seeking God's kingdom first. Amen. 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 I want you to take this tonight as we end, as we get ready to take uh, prayer requests and praise reports. Uh, I want you to ask yourself, write it down. Where am I? Just, just write down the number of categories, right, of, of where you are and, and do an inventory. And then when we come back next week, let's, let's talk about it. Hey, Bless you, Sister Tony. Amen. 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 All right. Let's take prayer requests, praise reports. If uh, you are uh, studying with us for the very first time, once again, this is St. John Northwest, the construction zone. We're located in the northwest quadrant of the city of Houston uh, at 6696 Antoine Drive. I am Reverend Connie Jackson, uh, pastor teacher. Uh, of this great corner uh, of the vineyard. And we'd love to have you uh, come and study with us again uh, on next Wednesday. Also, we'd love to have you worship with us, uh, whether online or on site if you're in the Houston uh, metropolitan area. Come join us on site. Amen. Sundays at 11 and then also Friday mornings um, uh, for our corporate prayer. Amen. If you have prayer requests, uh, please um, uh, start putting them in the chat. Um, also, uh, if you've been blessed by this, hadn't had an opportunity uh, to pay your tithe or to give an offering this week, uh, five ways that you can give. Um, of course, in person, if you're there on Sundays, uh, you can go online to our website, uh, to www.sjnorthwest.org. Or if you have the Secure Give, you can go to your app store, download Secure Give, uh, and then look for the St. John Northwest logo. Uh, you can also mail it in, if you're so inclined, uh, to P.O. Box 41131, Houston, Texas, 77241. Or you can give through the ever-popular app, uh, Cash App. Uh, our uh, handle is dollar sign ST. J-O-H-N-N-W. Amen. 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 Listen, family, let's get your prayer requests. God bless you tonight. It's my joy to have been with you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Margie. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you tonight. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Cassandra, great friend of mine, great, great preacher of God, great called woman of God. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, praying for you and your family still. Amen. Praying for the Coleman family. 
as they are going through. Amen. Praying for them. Praying for Brandon Taylor and Brianna Taylor uh, and Sister Sheila Taylor. Amen. Uh, Reverend Cassandra says, moving to a new city. I've lost my disconnect with the church home. I do attend church every Sunday, but I have not joined. Uh, we are praying for you, Reverend, because you certainly have an amazing gift uh, that the Lord has given you. But also, I believe this is a time of nourishment for you, a time of sitting and be taught, being taught. So we are praying that you will get somewhere where the word of God is being taught with integrity. Amen. Because you teach with integrity. And so we pray God's favor, continued blessing uh, upon your move to a new city. Amen. Well, God will nurture you so that you can then be released uh, to share your gift in the earth. Amen. Sister Deborah, always good to see you. Uh, my dear friend, my dear sister. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise report from Sister Cynthia. Uh, her sister in Christ, Renita, had a biopsy. They found two mass masses, but God, the test came back benign. Praise God. Amen. We'll tell Sister Renita that we are thanking God. Amen. Uh, for uh, those masses being benign. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Any other? Any other prayer requests? Hey, there's our folks from uh, New York. Amen. This is a La Cubana. Traveling grace and mercy from Julian, Jody, and husband going to uh, Jamaica. Amen. Donald Coleman and family, James Coleman. Uh, Michael Cleveland and Jade Cleveland. We are praying. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's see. Let me put this back up. Uh, for those of you uh, who are looking to give, amen. Uh, Cash app, uh, Rev Cassandra is dollar sign. S-T-J-O-H-N-N-W. Nicole also put that in the chat. Amen. Amen. God bless you for those of you who are being moved by the Spirit to give. Nicole Azan says, pray for her uh, to pass her financial licensure exam on Monday. We are praying, praying for you, Nicole, and also praying for your healing. Amen. Uh, prayers for Team Jackson. Uh, let's see. Damon Woolery, healing from a stroke. All right. God's grace and strength. And my weakness, amen, for this thorn. All right, Brother Jay, if you need to call me, let's talk about this thorn. God says, my grace is sufficient. You don't have to succumb to it or give in to it. Amen. But I am praying for you. Anyone else? I ask you that you guys continue in prayer for me. Uh, these uh, back spasms uh, don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, but uh, we are moving forward. Amen. Moving forward uh, and seeing if we cannot uh, not just get some relief, but that God will uh, uh, take care of it. Amen. Uh, at the root cause. Amen. 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 Listen, I love you so very much from the depths of my heart. And I'm excited about uh, what God is doing in us and through us. I am my, my, my life's goal. I believe my life's gift. Uh, to the world is uh, teaching and preaching. And if I can ever get to the point, that's all I do. Oh my goodness. Uh, what a release uh, that would be. So let's keep praying with you. But you keep praying with me as we are asking God to send us a youth pastor uh, for our children and our youth. Please put that on your prayer list. Amen. Join me in prayer daily for that. Amen. 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 Let's see. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brother Epps. Amen. All right. Thank you, Sister Renee. God bless you. All right, Sister Joe. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Okay. Let's pray, family, so you can get about the rest of your night. Going to be praying for you uh, this week. Uh, praying for uh, Sister DeCarlis uh, Spearman, uh, who is in treatment, uh, praying for her, uh, praying for those who are going through financial difficulties. Lots of people are going through uh, with housing. Uh, uh, our economy has uh, really been tough 
uh, for so many. So let's let's be in prayer for financial blessings and that we'll continue to be able to be a blessing uh, to those who come to us uh, and who need our help. Amen. Still praying for those in the Pasadena area um, and um, uh, Deer Park area who suffered uh, through that tornado uh, on last night. So all those impacted by that and even those impacted by flooding. Let's pray. Gracious God, how we love you and thank you and honor you, oh God, for this time of sharing in your word. God, we thank you because you're a God who not only is interested in convicting us, but you're also interested in converting us, not just challenging us, but changing us. And so God, for all of the prayer requests tonight, you knew them before they put it in the chat. You even know the request behind the request. And so we're praying tonight, oh God, that you will strengthen and heal Oh God, that you will nurture, that you will lift up, that you'll bind up. Oh God, that you'll release. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, tonight for anyone who would be struggling, oh God, to uh, uh, engaging in foolish conversations, oh God, Father, we pray their victory, God, over the serpents in their lives, oh God. We pray, oh God, that we'll change up who we hang out with, God, if they are not of you. Oh, God, we don't care how long the association. Give us the courage to do what we need to do, oh, God. And then, God, prosper us. Prosper us to the point, oh, God, where we can be a blessing uh, to anyone who comes to us for help, oh, God. Continue to give seed to the sower, God. Allow our church to be a light in a dark world. God, we are believing you uh, that we will be a church that provides hope, help, and healing. Oh God, and it comes only through Jesus Christ. Thank you for this medium of the internet, oh God, that allows us to reach people all over the world. We love you. We thank you. Father, we lift up uh, Bishop Julia MacMillan and her family now, oh God, uh, as they have lost uh, their mother, oh God, passed on. Would you strengthen them and comfort them, oh God, and give them all traveling grace as they are going back to their respective destinations. We pray also, God, for Reverend Julia Harnsberry, oh God, who just lost uh, her mom on yesterday. Uh, would you bless that family and keep them and hold them, oh God, as they prepare uh, to lay her to rest. We pray also for the Berry family, oh God, who will lay to rest uh, Dr. Jesse Mayberry, oh God, uh, this weekend. So God, lots of, lots of deaths, oh God, but we know, God, that you're as much uh, in death as you are in life. And so you said, precious uh, in your sight, it's the death of your saints, oh God. So God, we thank you because we know where they are. We thank you, oh God, that you left them in the earth long enough to influence us and love us and bless us, oh God. So would you comfort those who are alive and remain. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen. God bless you tonight, family. We love you so much, and we are looking forward to uh, having you on the prayer line on Friday morning, 7 a.m. Join us, and then, of course, uh, on this coming Sunday, join us at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time as we are in corporate worship with one another. Amen. Come on. Come on out. Come on back. We are, we are, we're having... Uh, a great time in the Lord. The Lord is blessing us. Amen. Good night, everybody. Take care. God bless you, Reverend Harris. Good to see you tonight from Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. Always good to have you on. All right, family. We're signing off. God bless you.